This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company. Hey, welcome to Stuff to Blow Your Kid's Mind. My name is Robert Lamb. And I'm Julie Douglas, and today we are talking about rainbows because they are spectacular and they seem to appear out of thin air. In this experiment, we're actually going to make a rainbow, but before we do, let's talk about where rainbows come from. Um, they, there's nothing magical actually happening. What happens is you have a tiny little particle of water that's floating around in the air, and the sunlight hits that particle. The particle then breaks that beam of light out into seven different wavelengths. That's right, and we are going to do the same thing here with this prism. Now, this one is a plastic prism, but you can get glass, three-sided prisms as well. You can get them online or at variety stores. And uh, we are going to use a good source of light that we've got off over here to the side and a piece of white paper to better illustrate how this light, this white light, when it's passed through this prism, is going to smash into these seven different wavelengths. And while Julie's uh, getting that ready, I'm going to point out that you can also conduct this experiment with just a glass of water held up into a beam of sunlight. Okay, so now you can start to see some of these colors emerging. And those seven different colors are red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. So we're actually being able to see through light here to see how light actually works. Yeah, and it's just really cool insight to uh, how light behaves and how really mysterious it is, but the actual science behind it. In fact, if you were to go above a rainbow, up in the clouds, and look down, what you would discover is that a rainbow is actually in the shape of a halo and not that half arc that we see here on the ground. So there's nothing magical happening. There are no leprechauns at all. It's just science. Okay, so we just looked at rainbows and how they're made and what happens when you take a beam of white light and you pass it through a prism or a raindrop and it breaks it up into seven different colors with seven different wavelengths. Um, and, you know, that was a nice insight into what seems like an illusion, these rainbows. But what about the sky above us, the blue sky? Is that an illusion too? It sure looks blue, but uh, as we know, you can look into the sky at night and you don't see the color blue, you see stars, you see space, you see into the outer universe. We know there's not really a big blue barrier up there. Um, and as it turns out, this is all has to do with the way that light interacts with objects. And even though the air around us may seem empty, it's actually filled with lots and lots of tiny little particles. And the wavelengths of light actually interact with those particles and influence what we see in the daytime sky. That's right, so you're talking about the wavelengths of light and what we're talking about specifically are those colors in the rainbow. So when you have short wavelength colors like blue and like violet, those tend to scatter a lot more when they're interacting with particles as small as nitrogen and oxygen. And so therefore when you look up at the sky, those are the colors that are the majority of what your eye sees. But still that seems a little bit odd, right? Because why don't we look up at a sky with just blue and purple splotches all over? Well, as it turns out, it all comes down to the, the machinery in our eyes and the machinery in our brains. Uh, because our, our eyes and our mind have to take this data and make sense of it, and they end up combining the two colors into one. Yeah, so think of it kind of like a little artist in your brain mixing together colors. In this case, you've got blue and white and purple and coming up with a really beautiful shade of blue. And depending on how much sunlight is in the day that you're looking at, if it's either really sunny or really cloudy, you're going to have a different shade of blue every single day. So we've explained the illusion of the blue sky overhead, but what about the sun? How does uh, our perception of light and the illusion of light uh, affect the way that we perceive the sun? Yeah, let's talk a little bit about how the sun's rays actually reach the Earth. That's right. It's important to realize that sunlight is actually composed of tiny particles, which are called photons. And when light reaches us, it is actually having to make that journey, that physical journey, from the surface of the sun to our planet. Yeah, and the really cool thing about this is that we actually know how long it takes for a little photon to actually reach the Earth. And the reason we know that is because we know the speed of light and we know the distance from Earth to Sun. That gives us an estimate of 8 minutes and 20 seconds. So when we take a prism and we break a beam of light into those seven wavelengths, we're gaining an insight into the illusion of light and, to, and, to, and into how light works. But we're also gaining a better understanding of why the sky is blue and why the sun looks like it, it does and how it actually energizes our world and lights uh, the world around us. That's right. It's a peek into the physics of the universe as well as into the human mind. This program is brought to you by BASF, the chemical company.